This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Nineteen eighty two was a crazy, wonderful year in TV. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. We've been covering the new shows on TV Guide's 1982 Fall Preview. And there were so many of them. Yes, and so many hits that we had to break it up into two episodes. So let's move on. Going to Wednesday, Tales of the Gold Monkey, ABC. We mentioned Indiana Jones previously. Here's the other half of the knockoff pair. Jake Cutter, Stephen Collins is a cargo pilot with weekly adventures in exotic locales, mostly on backlots and sound stages. Roddy McDowell, Jeff McKay, and Caitlin Ohini round out the cast. Inspired by the 1939 film Only Angels Have Wings, this was an early Donald Belisario production, who, of course, went on to Magnum P.I. and JAG and NCIS. Mm -hmm. It fared slightly better than the other Jones knockoff. It got 21 episodes. The next is one series that I actually watched and really, really <laughs> liked. I know it's silly. So you're the one. Yes. <laughs> seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Based loosely on the 1954 musical, the show included a number each episode written by Jimmy Webb. Of the large cast, only Richard Dean Anderson, MacGyver, and Peter Horton from 30-something are of note. Almost cast was Michael J. Fox, who picked another show that season, which we'll get to in just a minute, one season and done, 22 episodes, but still holds a place in my heart. <laughs> Mama Maloney. Lila Kay, a British actress, plays an Italian chef who runs a TV cooking show from her apartment. When the show was announced for the 1982-83 season, it actually didn't air until March of 1984, which might have something to do with the very stereotypical cast. When it actually did air, it only ran for 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. Family Ties on NBC, and here's the show Michael J. Fox picked instead of... Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Hippie parents Elise and Stephen, who are Meredith, Baxter, Bernie, and Michael Gross, have three kids of the 80s. Fox, playing Reagan Republican Alex Justine Bateman, playing Fashionista Mallory, and Tina Yothers, playing Tomboy Jennifer. Brian Bonesell was added in later seasons for the Cousin Oliver effect. Well, at least Elise gave birth to him. It was a huge hit, reaching the top ten for three seasons. It also generated three Emmys and a Golden Globe, and was the poster child for the very special episode, where a major dramatic event would occur. There was a revolving door of relatives and friends played by major guest stars. Timothy Busfield, James Cronwell, Gina Davis, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Tom Hanks, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who would later star on the spin-off series Day by Day, River Phoenix, Will Wheaton. Recurring cast included Mark Price as nerdy neighbor Skippy, Scott Valentine as Mallory's biker boyfriend Nick, Tracy Poland as Alex's girlfriend Ellen, and Fox would later marry her and is still married to her. Courtney Cox is another of Alex's girlfriend. And the show was based in our hometown of Columbus, Ohio. You would see Mallory bringing in Lazarus shopping bags or Stephen would read the dispatch. And I regularly watch this series. Yeah. And I actually watched Day by Day, which actually wasn't bad. It's, it, the idea of that series is that uh, friends of the, the, the Keatons are running a daycare, and Julie Weed Dreyfus plays this very 80s woman who's like, why are you bothering to do this? You're not making enough money. And <laughs> I vaguely remember that. Tucker's Witch, CBS. Meet Rick and Amanda Tucker, Catherine Hicks, and Tim Matheson, a happily married couple who own a detective agency. Oh, and Amanda is a psychic. So heart to heart minus the millions, plus the whole witchy thing. She gets her visions by looking at the eyes of her Siamese cat. It started out as a TV movie or backdoor pilot, which never aired, with Kim Cattrall and Art Hindle. But her racy role in Porky's demanded a replacement. Oh. Hindle was in Porky's as well, so out they both went. The first episode's villain, Ted Danson, who was about to get a better gig. The show ran only 12 episodes. I think that might do pretty good now, like on the CW with a young couple and... 
a remake of that, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now we're to Thursday night, and the first show we're talking about is Star of the Family on ABC. Brian Dennehy is a fire chief with a wacky company and kids, one of which is an up-and-coming teenage singer, Kathy Maznick. <laughs> Michael Dudikoff and Todd Sussman round out the cast. I guess someone thought Maznick was the next big thing, and she wasn't. I looked her up. She wasn't. <laughs> and that and its lead in, Joni Loves Chachi, doomed it to ten episodes. It Takes Two, ABC. Richard Crenna plays a doctor whose wife, Patty Duke Aston, is a feminist assistant DA. Wackiness ensues. From the creators and producers of Soap and Benson, it was a look at a couple with dual careers. Their teenage kids were played by future stars Helen Hunt and Anthony Edwards. Of course, Crenna and Aston both were teenage stars in mm -hmm. Our Miss Brooks and The Patty Duke Show, respectively. Despite all this firepower in front of and behind the camera, it was one season and out, 22 episodes. Duke would go on to another series by the same producers called Hail to the Chief. The kitchen set would be recycled for another show by the same producers, The Golden Girls. So the kitchen set actually had a, a longer better, life yes. than the series. <laughs> oh, cheers on NBC, the quintessential 80s sitcom and the bedrock of NBC's Thursday juggernaut, which I doubt needs to be discussed further, but we will. Mm -hmm. Incredibly, the show was nearly canceled after one season due to low ratings. It was 74th out of 77 shows. But the Emmy wins five in its first season out of 13 nominations changed NBC president Brandon Tartikoff's mind. The show would go on to an astounding 28 Emmy wins and 111 nominations, along with six Golden Globes out of 31 nominations. Ted Danson and B.B. North won two Emmys. Rhea Perlman got four. Shelley Long, Kirstie Alley, and Woody Harrelson got one each. The directors and writers would basically take over the industry for a whole generation. The show also introduced story arcs on a sitcom, which helped fuel ratings. It was in the top five for eight seasons. Coach, played by Nicholas Consanto, died in season four and re was replaced by Woody Harrelson. Frasier, Kelsey Grammer, became Diane's beau in the third season. Diane left the show in 1987, replaced by Rebecca, which is Kirstie Alley. Lilith, Phoebe Newworth started a relationship with Frazier in the fourth season. Barflies Cliff, John Rassenberger, and Norm! Norm George Went were there the whole series along with Car Carla, who was Rhea Perlman, and of course Sam, Ted Danson. After 11 seasons, the final episode would be watched by 80 million viewers. Grammer went on to be the longest running single live action character on a TV show with Frazier. The New Odd Couple, ABC. Ever since the original play-slash-film-slash-TV series, the show has been recast over and over. See the recent attempt on CBS. In this case, Sanford and Sons demand Wilson as Oscar with Barney Miller's Ron Glass as Felix. Apart from the complexion, it's the same concept and jokes. In fact, eight of the 18 episodes recycled old scripts. <laughs> <laughs> we can't pay writers. That's the deal. <laughs> The Powers of Matthew Starr on NBC. We've talked about this series in our last TV Guide review because it was supposed to come out in 1981. The star, Peter Barton, was badly burned by pyrotechnics during a stunt, and the show was pushed back for months. In the end, it was moot, and it was one and done in 22 episodes. Knight Rider, NBC, a throwback to 70s sci-fi detective action series like Gemini Man. Billionaire Wilton Knight, Saves a police detective after a near-fatal injury, gives him plastic surgery, and a new identity, Michael Knight, of course, played by David Hasselhoff. Oh, and he gets an ultra-high-tech talking car named Kit, the Knight Industries 2000, the voice of William Daniels. This is the second half of his TV double duty with St. Elsewhere. Edward Mulher leads the Foundation for Law and Government, FLAG, and is Michael's main contact. Patricia, Patricia McPherson, then Rebecca Holden, then McPherson again, plays Kit's technician and money penny tonight. Kit was quite prickly and was constantly trying to talk Michael out of dangerous plans, but then a turbo boost, super pursuit mode, or the bulletproof exterior would get them out of trouble. At one point, we get an evil twin episode with Hasselhoff and a goatee, an evil car named Cat. 
<laughs> it was a very silly series and quite popular. It generated tons of toys and merchandise. It also generated five remakes or reboots over the years, none of which were hits, plus various attempts to restart the franchise as late as this year. Mm -hmm. Four seasons, 90 episodes. And I do want to point out that uh, some GPSs, you can actually get the voice of Kit to tell you where to go. I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Meanwhile, over on ABC, we have The Quest. Four unrelated people, photojournalist Perry King, con artist Ray Vite, retired cop Noah Barry Jr., and department store buyer Karen Austin are the heirs to a Mediterranean throne based on TV logic. Who gets the throne? <laughs> Whoever is the most worthy in a series of adventures set up by John Rhys Davies and Michael Billington. This mess from Stephen J. Cannell lasted nine episodes, only five of which aired. Remington Steel, NBC. Female private eye Laura Holt, Stephanie Zimblist, can't get clients, so she creates fictitious frontman Remington Steel to head the agency. This guy shows up. Pierce Brosnan announces he is Steel and forces Holt to let him partner on cases. He's a mysterious character, a con man, and has a very high opinion of himself. She's the real detective and saves him from danger a lot. Can they get along? <laughs> the show pulled a lot from f film noir. It was a genre that Steele really loves. And there's a lot of comedy and rom romance going on during their cases. The show had actually been pitched in 1969 but it took MTM to push it to TV. Grant Tinker of MTM became chairman of NBC shortly before the series was greenlit. Mm. Ah. Various side characters came and went throughout the series. Doris Roberts, later of Everybody Loves Raymond, came on as a secretary. Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., Stephanie's real father, was Steel, uh, Steel's con man mentor. The show was briefly canceled after four seasons, but got a reprieve with new NBC head Warren Littlefield. Unfortunately, this negatively impacted the careers of both Brosnan and Zimbalist. He had been offered and accepted the role of the new James Bond, but was forced to pull out, replaced by Timothy Dalton. Of course, Brosnan would later get the role anyway. She was hired as the female lead in Robocop and had to drop out, replaced by Nancy Allen. That final season turned into only six hours of TV movies. Aww. So it wasn't even an actual season. So five seasons and 94 episodes total. So to recap, in 1982, not counting the early shows, we got nine hits, meaning they went more than one season, and 15 flops, a very high success rate. And NBC laid the groundwork for their 80s dominance with Silver Spoons, St. Elsewhere, Family Ties, Cheers, Knight Rider, and Remington Steel, which had a combined 38 seasons total. So you can see that out of those nine hits, six of them were NBCs. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll soon see if 1983 can beat that. And while you're thinking about that, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Turbo Boost! <laughs> <laughs>